if not you question this is a question somebody sending a question to this official Muslim website if not you oh Muhammad I would not have created the creation who is the one is talking supposedly Allah talking about who talking about Muhammad so Allah is saying if not you Muhammad I will not create the whole world creation is everything he created this is as simple as that which means humans chickens trees mountains earth everything everything we have the whole universe uh, Sun stars moon you name it galaxies all of those are created for one purpose and that is Muhammad now the question is let us read together question what do the respect of al ulama? The word ulama mean here mean uh, scholars. This word ulama means scholars of the religion, which means Islam, and the Sharia say about this hadith. All right, what is the hadith? Lola kama khalaqt al khalq, or ma khalaqt al aflak. Sorry, uh, there's two versions of the hadith. One of saying this, but at the same is the same meaning. Which book is this hadith in? Is the Prophet of Allah may Allah pray on him and salute him the reason for the creation or not are there more hadith that support this narration so this is the question coming from a Muslim not from me the answer let us go to the answer all right The answer here in front of us, if you see with me, it says, Indeed, indeed, uh, okay, indeed, what? Indeed, the Prophet of Allah, Allah pray on him and salute him, is the reason for the creation of Adam. And here, by the way, I want you to take a note. You remember yesterday we mentioned to you that Muslims, they say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after Muhammad, but they never say that after any other prophet for them. Notice with me here what happened. After the name of Muhammad, they say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? After the name of Adam, they said, Alayhi Salam. So why they say in English that Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it says a blessing on him or peace on him when this word this sentence never used for Adam never used for Jesus never used for Musa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used only after the name of Muhammad for a very simple reason for Muhammad is the true God of Islam for Allah himself he pray on him and he salute him have you ever heard of God pray on a person and he salute him as if he's working for him now for sure indeed look what it says indeed the Prophet of Allah Allah pray on him is the reason for the creation of Adam and the universe and what and the universe now here we need to be a little uh, <clears throat> you know uh, we have to, to like to think deeper no, just don't take the word as it is from from outside and let it go think deeper if the Muslims believe Muhammad is just a prophet and Muhammad he is the last prophet and he come because the Christians they corrupt their book and the Jews corrupt their book blah 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 now what is the purpose of saying such a statement that Muhammad because of him the whole universe is created Adam himself was created for Muhammad if you think about it it look like all of us we are toys created for the sake of Muhammad why in the world the God he created the world for the sake of Muhammad why he created the stars for the sake of Muhammad why he created the galaxies for the sake of Muhammad 
why he created the elephants the mules the horses the dogs the chickens for the sake of Muhammad why we have a trees rivers oceans for the sake of Muhammad and yet they say to us uh, you know they don't worship Muhammad you notice here what the Muslims are saying to us that Allah existence is exist too for the sake of Muhammad I mean what the purpose of Allah based on this story uh, are you guys getting my point what is the purpose of Allah existence himself based on this story it's just for the sake of Muhammad it's just to do things for Muhammad everything Allah do is for the sake of Muhammad so who is God and who is Muhammad who is Allah and who is Muhammad obviously Allah he worked for Muhammad it's not it's not the opposite for everything Allah he do is for the sake of the man his name is Muhammad you see Muhammad is not a true name of this man he changed his name because he wanted to be God if you ask any Muslim what the name Muhammad mean he will say to you it's mean the praised one the praised one I thought you Muslims believe in Tawheed as you claim that Tawheed mean believing in one God how you believe in a prophet his name is the praised one how many praised one you have the praised one is a title given only to God there's no other one to be praised no man nobody you see when when we say praise Jesus because we Christians as as a Christians believe in Jesus to be God you are not praising the man we are praising the God so how you Muslims follow a man his name is the praised one unless he's God but the unique about this God he have a testicles and he used them you see uh, uh, the Muslims they say to us uh, how Jesus can be God but yet he is a man uh, and how he can be God but he have uh, whatever the man he have you know he have a full body as a human being he have a private part so how he can be God well Jesus he did not commit any sin and he did not use any of his flesh to be the flesh of sin yet Muhammad God created everything for him the whole universe the holy creatures the holy creation just for the sake of Muhammad and the purpose is Muhammad only and only Muhammad and yet Muhammad is just a servant of God the fact as you see it's Allah who is servant of Muhammad for everything created for the sake of Muhammad you see the Bible says that everything created by him and for him who the Messiah so the Messiah speak of Jesus in such a way and I believe Muhammad is trying to copy the statements of the Bible that everything was created for him but he did not say by him that is the only different everything was created for the sake of Muhammad when somebody says to me that everything created for the sake of a man and that uh, like you know this man, this man is not even the first man exists I mean look even Adam himself is created for the sake of Muhammad which sometimes make me think I mean okay was Muhammad exist before Adam the fact the Muslims many of them believe yes many of them they believe yes actually Adam when he commits sin if you remember in the Quran when Adam he commits sin and Allah he got angry from him Adam he asked Allah for forgiveness okay so what happened uh, Allah he been asked by Adam to be forgiven but how how Allah really forgive Adam uh, uh, if we go to the Quran, we will find this story here. All right. <clears throat> Chapter 2, verse number 37. فَتَلَقَّ آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِيمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ So Adam, he received words from his Lord 
and he forgive him. Now, if we go to the interpretation to see what really exactly happened, this is chapter 2, verse number 37, you will see that Adam, he asked Allah to forgive him for the sake of Muhammad. What? Adam, he asked Allah to forgive him for the sake of Muhammad. How does this happen? Simply, what the Muslims believe, that Adam, and uh, uh, let me tell you the story as, as it is, by the way. When Adam commits sin, uh, he asks Allah for forgiveness, but Allah obviously is not answering. So Adam then he decide to ask him to be forgiven for the sake of Muhammad. So Allah spoke to Adam and he says to him, how you know about Muhammad? How you know about Muhammad? Adam, he said, well, when you created me, I rose my head up and I found the name of the Prophet Muhammad written all over your chair. And what, that was the reason for me to know that he must be the most important person for you. So I ask you in his name to forgive me. Hello, everybody. For those who they are saying hi, I forgive me if I don't say uh, answer back. Hi, Roger. Um, I don't look at the chat most of the time. I'm focusing in the text in the front of us so we can explain. So Adam, when he commits sin, he saw when Allah he created him, the first second he created him, he opened his eyes, he looked at the throne of Allah, and he found the name of Muhammad written all over the throne. Don't you think there is a madness here? They say to us, Muhammad, just a man, but yet God himself, he have the name of Muhammad everywhere, in his chair, in behind of his chair, in the legs of his chair, in the hand of his chair. And I will not be surprised if the name of Muhammad written in the, in the forehead of Allah. You know what I mean? Who is this Muhammad? I mean, why Allah? Allah, he sent 124,000 prophets. Muhammad is just one of them. He is a great, he is not a great. I mean, why Allah? He wrote the name of Muhammad all over his chair. Why Allah is obsessed with Muhammad? If you remember, when Muhammad, uh, as usual, you know, Muhammad always, Anytime he want to have sex, anytime he want to do something, he always make a verse in the Quran to fulfill his desire. So Aisha one day she said, I found that your God, Muhammad, he rushed into your desire. I found that your God, read with me. This is Sahih Muslim, and this is Aisha is talking. I feel jealous, okay, why she feel jealous, of the women who offer themselves to the Prophet. So supposedly, this is the purpose of the, this statement. She was jealous, but the fact there is something behind it, more than just jealousy. I agree, yes, you must be jealous. She is a wife, and she saw a lo long line of women offering themselves and offering their vagina for the prophet of God who never say no unless the women she is not good looking. So Allah Messenger, may uh, Allah, may peace on him, doesn't say that in Arabic, it says Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which means Allah pray on him and salute him. Uh, and said, then when Allah the exalted, the glorious revealed this, revealed what? You may differ any of them you wish and take to yourself any you wish. And if you desire any, you have set aside. <laughs> this is Quran. 
So go on saying to Muhammad, you can choose whatever, like there's a lot of women coming to you. You can, you do not need to have to take them all because Muhammad, he said any woman, Muslim woman, she can offer herself. But now he found out there's a lot of, a lot of them, they are coming, they are ugly. He, he don't, you know, he don't want to take them all. Some of them, they are uh, old. Some of them, they are not good looking. looking. Some of them, is, he's not what looking for this. He's looking for the young ones, the beautiful ones. You know, this is what he liked. So now he need to find a solution. First, he made a verse saying, any woman, she can give her vagina to me and I will, excuse my language, I will F her. But now a lot of women are offering themselves to find security. A lot of women, they have no good life. They are poor. You know, we are talking about old days. There's no such security. There's no nothing. So what you do? Now we found a man. He, if he sleep with you, you will live secure for the rest of your life. You will have a free food, a free shelter, protected and will be respected. Just for opening your legs for this man, his name is Muhammad. So now a lot of women lying up in the front of the house of Muhammad, offering their vagina for, for the Prophet. May Allah you know, pray on him and salute him. And Aisha, she is witnessing this too, so she got jealous. And Muhammad, he received a verse saying, okay, you know what? You can delay any of them for later to F or you can if her now, even or even you can sit her aside, you don't take her. It's up to you, who you take or you refuse. And this way, Muhammad, he will make it, it's his God who is asking him to do this. It's not him, he's just doing what Allah wants. And why Allah, he want him to off if for those women, nobody knows. Obviously, he's a filthy man, making fun of those, you know, taking advantage of the poor ones. And, uh, you know, he used the name of God just to, uh, 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 you know, to say it's not me but the fact he is the true god of islam and he is the true one who is in control of everything but aisha she said i said it seemed to me that your lord has tends to satisfy your desire and this is the truth so what aisha she noticed That anything Muhammad he want, especially when it's come to sex, right away Allah he sent him a verse about it and he approved what we want. I see that Allah, he don't hesitate right away he is there. Just mention something, wish something, and that thing is going to be in the front of you like a magic. Uh, and the whole purpose of, of this, that if I say God, he told you know. Do you remember the the there is a there is a Protestant a priest? Uh, I don't want to call him priest. I mean, he's, he's a, obviously he's a scam. He said uh, uh, God told me to buy a one million dollar airplane. I think his last name I forgot his name anyway. So God, he told him to buy one million dollar airplane. Sorry, not $1 million, uh, $50, 50 million, sorry, $50 million, I think. All right? So to make to make his uh, his evil desire to be rich and to have an airplane, why why somebody is serving God, he want to have an airplane for himself? Jesus himself, he used a donkey. All right? Why somebody claim he is serving God, he need an airplane for himself alone. Can't you fly with, like everybody? Take a business class. You are a, your majesty. Huh? You are an angel of God. Take a business class. Let, let the poor Christians pay for it. it. It's not enough for him. It's not enough for him. He want to stay in a five-star hotels. He want to have a limousine. It's not enough for him. He have a big house. He's so rich. It's not enough. He wants an airplane for himself alone. This is exactly the kind of people we are facing using the name of God to fool the poor, naive people. So Muhammad always, the same as this priest, who is a scumbag, obviously, the same equality, but that priest, he is not reaching the point who says any woman she can give herself to me so I can excuse my language, F her. He did not reach that fifth filthy point yet, but maybe in the future he will. Muhammad is beyond all the filthy priests.
So Aisha, she noticed that anything Muhammad he want, right away Allah is right there, especially when it's come to sex. The God of Islam is like a tree under the testicles of the Prophet. And by the way, for those who don't like to hear what some of words of mine, I say it as it is. So if you don't like to hear it, you can leave. I am not a minister. I am not a bishop. My name is a Christian prince. I am a Christian. And because I'm a Christian, I say things as it is. I don't sugarcoat things. I say things as it is. So if you don't like to hear those words, don't listen to me. So obviously, everything in this religion is based in one man, to serve one man, the existence of one man, the testicle of one man, the penis of one man, the homosexuality of one man, the, 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 the beautiful of one man. Everything is made for this man. This is why we see the topic there. And it doesn't sound strange when we see the Muslim saying, is it true that God, he created the whole world for the sake of the Prophet Muhammad? Is it true? Absolutely. And this is why we see the answer coming so clear, saying, indeed, indeed, my friend, indeed, my brother, Allah, he created the whole universe. The reason actually, indeed, the prophet of Allah is the reason for the creation of Adam. So Adam himself wasn't exist for anything. I mean, why Adam is exist? What is the purpose of Adam to exist? It was just for the sake of Muhammad. Now, why Adam is exist for the sake of Muhammad? If there is any Muslim can explain to us, Any Muslim can explain? Why Allah created Adam for the sake of Muhammad? What does that mean exactly? What? Uh, Adam, Eve, Noah, the children of Noah, the nations, generations, billions of people created all of them for the sake of Muhammad. What does that mean exactly? Allah created me for the sake of Muhammad. Any Muslim can explain? How you say to us Muhammad is just a man and then you say everything created for the sake of this man, including the first man exists in this universe, which is Adam supposedly. And then the madness conti continue. And the universe is exist for the sake of Muhammad. If the Prophet of Allah was not in existence, the Arsh, 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 do you know guys what Arsh mean? Arsh is the throne of Allah. The Arsh, even the throne of Allah. Will not be exist. The word of Allah, they say Allah, which Allah he wrote supposedly the Quran in it. And his words. It's not going to be exist. Al-Qalam. Al-Qalam, which is the pen which Allah, he write his words with, which is very funny because God, he need the pen to write. I mean, this is stupid. They say to us that God, if he wants something to be, he say be is going to be. But yet he need a pen and he the board. However, all those things are created only because of Muhammad. If not Muhammad, those things will not be there. And that is just something you read in front of your eyes. But yet you say to us, Muhammad is just a normal man. How he can, he, how, how he can be? How you fool yourself, Muslims, after all of this, and you try to say to us, 
that Muhammad is just a man, yet the whole universe is created for his sake. Any Muslims? Even they are saying, if you notice with me here, when they say Al Arsh, Al Kursi, Al Arsh Al Kursi, let me show you from the Quran, which is simply the word, uh, the, the word Arsh uh, or Al Kursi is the throne of Allah. So Allah, without Muhammad, he will not have a, even a chair. <laughs> Without uh, Lord have mercy. Chapter two, verse number two five five. It says, "The width of the chair of Allah is the width of the earth and the heaven," which is scientifically can cannot be true, because in order to have a width for the sky and the earth, they have to be the same size. Same time, it have to be from one side. Like the earth is a flat, the sky is a flat, and then Allah in the top. So Allah have a chair, and but if not Muhammad, the chair of Allah won't exist. Allah have a arsh, it's the same as the chair, which is mean the throne. As we saw, to the chapter seven, verse number fifty-four. Seven fifty-four. Allah have a throne. Arsh and chapter 9 verse 129 it says he is the Lord of the throne and chapter uh, 10 verse number 3 uh, Allah he created the earth and the heaven and then he lay down in his throne or he sat down in his throne so the word throne is all over but as you see this is the word Al Arsh but according to the Muslims even the throne of Allah even the chair of Allah is it created for the sake of Muhammad. So what is left? Allah himself, the Quran is exists for the sake of Muhammad. The kursi, the throne, the tablets of Allah, the sky, the earth, the heaven, the hell, the trees, the stones and all other creatures would not exist. How anyone in the world believe in such a garbage? And how you Muslims after this you can convince us that you believe in a prophet who is a servant of God? He is just a man. He is a servant of God, but God, he makes chapters for his sake of his penis, for the sake of his money, for the sake of his wealth, for the sake, but not, but all of this was not enough. The madness of Islam went farther to the point that even us, actually, there is more hadith. As an example, the prophet of Allah, before he created, you know, before, before uh, Allah created the prophet, Allah he sent him in 12 oceans Allah he sent him in 12 oceans in a trip and that last was long before the creation of Adam in some hadith it says 20,000 years before the creation of Adam and the Prophet of Allah he went through those 12 oceans and he sweat he sweat he sweat 100 24,000 drop of a sweetness. 100, oh, I'm typing in Arabic, sorry. 124,000 of a sweat. And from every drop of a sweat, Allah created a prophet. So even the prophets are created from the dirt of Muhammad. You believe it? Adam, Musa, Isa supposedly he is a prophet too, which means Jesus supposedly according to them. Even Jesus, 
uh, Mary, Joseph, uh, uh, you name it, all, all, Moses, uh, Aaron, all the names, the Pharaoh, everybody, all, all people, they are created for the sake of Muhammad, but specifically the Prophet created from his dirt. Sweat is a dirt. Sweat, by the way, sweat, if you don't know what sweat, is the same as your urine, but it's come in different way. It take poison out of your body and at the same time keep you cooling down. This is why it smell. From the sweat of Muhammad, prophets of God created. So who is this Muhammad? Why Allah could not create prophet from something else? Why from the sweat of Muhammad, from the dirt of Muhammad? Then the question continue about Muhammad being the one who everything was created for his sake, which is obviously he is God. The scholar in the website, he started quoting a uh, video, sorry, uh, hadith or stories proving that Muhammad, everything was created for him, uh, uh, you know, additional to the hadith which we read already. It says, the Prophet وسلم, said when Adam made the mistake, he asked, oh, uh, oh Allah, I asked you for the sake of Muhammad to forgive me. Adam, he asked Allah, oh Allah, for the sake of Muhammad, forgive me. Allah, he looked at Adam like, what? What? Look, look, look. Let me make the text bigger so you guys can read it better. Hold on. Because this is getting more funny. More funny and more stupid. All right. So when Adam commits sin, he asked Allah for forgiveness. He said to him, Adam supposedly talking. When Adam, he made the mistake or the sin, he asked, Oh Allah, I ask you for the sake of Muhammad to forgive me. Allah said to him, Oh Adam, how you recognize Muhammad when I have not yet created him? That's deep. That's action. Allah like, look at Adam like, what? 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 What, what you said, Adam? How you know about Muhammad? Guys, don't the Muslims, they say to us that Allah, he know everything? Right? Don't the Muslims, they say, Allah, he knows everything? Okay, how come Allah did not know how Adam, he knew about Muhammad's existence? It's a stupid story, right? Okay. Adam said, Look how Adam now, Adam is smart, man. Adam is something. Oh Allah, when you created me and the blue in my, the, me in the spirit, I lifted up, I lift up my head and I saw written on the arsh, which means the chair, your chair, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, the shahada, the shahada of Allah is written on the chair of Muhammad, you, uh, chair of Allah, you read it? The Shahada, the Muslim, they say, which has the name of Muhammad, is written all over the chair of Muhammad, or chair of Allah. But, you know, when I read this uh, story first time, this is a long, long time ago, uh, I said to myself, how Adam knew how to read, I mean, Arabic? <laughs> this is the first time a man, he exists, first second he opened his eyes, and right away he's reading Arabic? But Arabic at that time wasn't exist. You see, many people do not know what Arabic language really. Arabic is not really a language by itself. Arabic is a collection of languages. You know, the, the, uh, the word uh, uh, Arab, Arab uh, mostly it's coming from 
a title was given by the Aramaic. Those who live in the desert, they call them Arab. In other way, like Bedouin, you know? It's not really an ethnic, it's not a language. Uh, it's not anything, it's, it's a desert, they call it Arabia. A desert is Arabia. So if, if the Aramaic exists now in Arizona, in America, they would call Arizona Arabia. So here he continues saying, Allah, he asked Adam, how you know that I, uh, how you know about Muhammad? How you recognize Muhammad when I did not create him yet? Adam, he said, oh Allah, when you created me, I, uh, uh, and uh, blow into my, uh, me, the spirit, I lifted my head and I saw written on the arsh, which means the chair of Allah, the name of the prophet. So I got to know that you would only join your name with him who is most beloved to you do you see guys here it says joined your name with do you see it joined your name with the muslim they say if anyone he joined the name of a man with god he is committing shirk right so how the muslims believe in this garbage how the Muslims even accept Shahada? They say to us, we believe in Tawheed, we believe in one God. So why you are associating the name of a man with the name of God? Who is this man? He's a man. I mean, why the name of a man like Muhammad to be in the same line with the name of God? And not only in earth, even in the chair of Allah. Madness. And then the hadith continues, says, Allah said, O Adam, you spoke in the truth. Uh -huh. Indeed, Muhammad is more beloved to me than anything. And when you ask me for his sake, I pardon you. If Muhammad was not, existing, was not in existence, I would not have created you. Guys, do you see how dangerous this is? Do you see the last statement? If not Muhammad was in existence, I would not create you, which means Muhammad is exist before Adam. But this is a contradiction for the same hadith because it's a two line before he said, how you know about Muhammad and yet I did not create him. In the beginning of the hadith, Muhammad not created. At the end of the hadith, Muhammad is exist. <clears throat> you see the point? This is telling you how the stupidity of those stories, how they are written by a stupid person. How he said to him, well, how you know about uh, 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 Muhammad, yet he is not created. And then at the end of the hadith, he says, for sure, Adam, you spoke the truth. If not the existence of Muhammad, you will not exist. Which means the existence of Muhammad is exist before Adam. Madness, stupid. I mean, they have no, you know, it's always when I look at a Muslim, I look at a human who is coming from, uh, like, you know, have you ever seen somebody have a surgery? And they give him some drugs so he will not suffer the pain. And then he starts like, Shouting, screaming, saying things doesn't make sense. That is the stage of a Muslim. His violence, his legs is going all over his hands. You know, he want to beat people around him. He want to beat himself. He want to break things. He's not. He's he is coming from a surgery. Well, obviously, Adam he have a very strong vision. Uh, uh, David he is asking how Adam was able to see what is written in the throne of Adam, if a uh, throne of Allah, if Allah is uh, in the high, high above the seven heaven. Uh, well, obviously, Adam here can see. I mean, ask Allah, don't ask me. <laughs> ask no questions, my friend. Quran says, chapter 5, verse 101. Ask no questions. Why? Because if you ask questions, Questions are very embarrassing and will make Muhammad and his religion stupid.
That's as simple as that. Now we continue. <laughs> Another hadith. You remember the guy, his name Nightmare, the one who called me yesterday? He mentioned to me Ibn Taymiyyah. I wish this guy is here to see what Ibn Taymiyyah says. Ibn Taymiyyah is, an, is, a, uh, is a high scar of Islam and he is really a crazy man. But the Muslims, they adore him and they worship him and they consider whatever he's saying, he take him for granted. This is Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad. <coughs> Uh, no, Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Abbas. Okay, this is from Abdullah ibn Abbas. Allah revealed uh, uh, to Prophet Isa. Look at this. Now, Isa, you Christian, your Lord Messiah, this is supposedly Isa. Let us see what happened. Notice here, notice here, when they speak about, remember I told you before, when they say the name of Isa or Musa or etc., they say alayhi salam. They don't say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You notice? You see, look, the name of Muhammad, the Prophet of Allah, the Muslim after that they say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But in English they translate the same for both. They say peace upon them both. But the fact is not. You get the point? For anyone not Muhammad, anyone who consider him Prophet, they say Alayhi Salam. As simple as that. Peace on him. And that is proving to us that Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have nothing to do with the Muslim translation they give us. And the question is, if it's about a blessing unto him, okay, why Muslim don't say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Jesus? Why do not say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Moses? Why only Muhammad is the one who the Muslim they use such a title with him? Anyway, we are here to get the Muslim busted with their cult. We continue. So now the story is involving Isa, which is supposedly the Messiah. If you are a Christian, I guarantee you, my friend, none of the words is written here is accurate. It's just a fiction story. Allah revealed to the Prophet Isa, alayhi salam, O Isa, have faith in Muhammad. What? <coughs> what? Allah told 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 Jesus, "Hey, hey, Jesus, have faith in Muhammad." Okay, all right. What? And order your ummah, which means your followers, to do the same. Man, Allah, right away, from the second he created Isa, he said to him, listen, Isa, I created you, okay? I made you a prophet, but you need to do something. Right away, you tell your people to have faith on Muhammad, and you start by yourself. Everybody have to believe in, in Muhammad. Isa and his followers, right away, but Muhammad does not exist yet. No, he exists, as we showed you. He exists before Adam was exist. Now the story continue. If, look what Allah said to Isa, which means to Jesus, if Muhammad was not in existence, I would not have created Adam, nor I made the heaven or hell. Do you see it? Any Muslim have a comment? If there is any Muslim have a comment about this stupidity? Now we continue. The story is not over. Hadith number four, number three, sorry. The brave prophet of Allah, Allah pray on him and salute him, said that Jibreel came to me and said that Allah says to you, 
if you were not created I would not have made the heaven or the hell heaven and hell created because of Muhammad why Any comment from Muslim? What is this? They say to us, Muhammad is just a man. Uh, Muhammad is just a servant of God. And then we find the heaven, the hell, Adam, Musa, the Isa, the human, galaxies, the moon, the sun, the stars, the trees, the dogs, the cats. Everything was created for the sake of Muhammad. But yet Muhammad, they say to us, he's just a man. It's very obvious that Muslims worship Muhammad. They might say he is just a prophet, but if you go on reality, the true God of Islam is Muhammad, none else. Actually, in Islamic countries, if you say the effort to Allah, you will not be killed. If you say the effort to Muhammad, you are going to be dead immediately. You go in the Middle East, you see people cursing Allah, saying the effort to Allah, and no problem. But you will not see a Muslim there to say such a thing to Muhammad. We have a Muslim in the text saying to me, I am not a scholar. Will you eat it? I'm showing you what the scholars say. This is your scholars. <laughs> Guys, you are not a scholar. For, for, first of all, I don't consider myself a scholar in Islam, even though I know more than your scholars because I believe. To be a scholar in Islam, you have to be, uh, let us say, uh, it's a it's a dump title. You see, when I, fi I finished my degree in law, I was very upset from my father because when I called him, I said, hey, I'm happy, you know, I finished my, my, my law degree. He said to me, you have a degree in farting. He don't want me to study this degree. He don't want me to study this stupid religion. He, you know, he considered I learned nothing. I was upset at that time, but now I understand exactly what he's talking about. This religion, you learn about nothing but farting and stupidity. Even but as long as we are talking about farting, do you know that Muhammad, the Muslim, they say, as long as we are talking about Muhammad, the God, that Muhammad, when he do poo Allah, he opened the ground and he made the poo swallow his poo Have you ever heard of such a thing in any religion? Muhammad is sitting now, uh, 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 squeezing it, and the poopoo is coming. Before the poopoo arrive to the ground, the ground open and eat the poopoo, and the poopoo is vanished. And you say to me, you don't worship Muhammad? Uh, right, away, right away, guys, when the ground eat the poopoo of the Prophet, the ground produce musk perfume. Then you say to me, you, you Muslim, don't worship Muhammad, right? So what is this story about? And anyway, right away, I, I, I type, you know, I type the, the science of, uh, of the bathroom. Ilm al mean the knowledge of the bathroom, because all of his time is focusing in the, in the bathroom, in the penis, in the vagina. Uh, you know, just two days ago, we were showing you a, 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 an example of Muslims' books about sex, you remember? I don't want to do it again. It's very dirty. It's very disgusting. So to be a scholar in Islam, you have to be, your scholarship is based on dirt and stupidity. This is why when somebody says, this guy is a scholar, I, I laugh. I mean, scholar, what scholar? You know, this is, I, I, nobody deserves such a name because the topic itself is stupid. You know what I mean? But sadly, me, myself, I find myself, I have to teach you about these stupid things so people cannot fool you and fool your friends and your family, etc. But it's not really, there's nothing there to be a scholar about it. And there's no knowledge there. You, know, you learn nothing. 
there's nothing valuable. There's nothing useful. It's stupid. I mean, from everything we read until now about Muhammad, from the Muslim website until now, if there's anything useful, what is the purpose of Allah creating the whole universe for Muhammad? Nobody knows. Where the Muslims, they, they get the story of Adam speaking to Allah from? They were there. Who is the one who wrote this hadith about Adam said to Allah? Any Muslim can tell us? Where the Muslim get the story that Allah, he says to Isa, if not Muhammad, I will not create the heaven and the earth. Where does the story is coming from? You know what I mean? So the much you know about this religion, the much, the much you find yourself, you are carrying a degree about farting, sex, and even the sex of them is not real. Even like you learn nothing about even sexuality is, is not real. Even their sexuality is a fantasy. A penis will never sleep. You know, Allah will make your, uh, Allah, he make your, your, uh, your children from the right ball and the left ball will, will, will make it disabled in the heaven. In the heaven, if you wish to have a baby, uh, uh, Allah will make you bread. Have you ever heard of a God? He will make a man a bread net. A man. He will make him bread net and deliver it all of it in one hour. This is what I call the microwave. If you wish to have a, a, a son in the heaven, Muhammad he said, to be bread net and to, de to de deliver it, it's going to take you one hour. Now, you know, I can believe in this hadith. Let us say this hadith is, a, is speaking of a miracle that a Muslim man he will get a bread net, he will deliver a baby, all right? But how he will deliver it from where? Any Muslim can tell me the baby will come out from where? So until now, we reach the conclusion that obviously Muhammad is the true God of Islam. And we showed you already many hadith. But there is yet more hadith to come. Do we have any Muslim who don't agree that Muhammad is a truly is your God according to Islam? <coughs> Anyone? Hadith number four. Ibn Asaka reported from Suleiman al-Farisi. Now Suleiman al-Farisi, the word Pharisee mean, the word Pharisee mean the Persian. Suleiman al-Farisi was behind a lot of his stories Muhammad he came with in his religion. And maybe sometime we should talk, make a special study about Suleiman al-Farisi. So it says, Jibreel came to the Prophet Allah pray on him and salute him and say that Allah says I have not created anyone who is more honored to me than you I have created the world and that all there is therein so they may know the rank that you possess me I mean do you see how humble Muhammad is <clears throat> Guys, do you see how humble Muhammad is? All this story is coming from who? Coming from Muhammad. Obviously, Muhammad is a very humble man. The whole world, everything, to see the rank. Okay, and a general. What's your rank? I'm major, see? I'm general, you're nothing. Everybody is created to see the, 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 the master surgeon, uh, uh, I mean, this is a crazy man. Let us continue. I would not have a, a, a created the word if I hadn't created you. 
the purpose of creating the world is just this. And I was asking myself since I was a kid, why am I created? Why am I created? Why I like pasta? Huh? Why I like pasta? Because Allah created me for the sake of Muhammad. Hmm. Okay. Why I like to do my live podcast and kick the butt of Muhammad? Because Allah, he created me to kick the butt of Muhammad. <laughs> I mean, you Muslims, do you have a brain? Do you Muslims have a brain? If you do, prove it. Something wrong with your brain. It's in vacation, but the vacation of a Muslim brain is long vacation. Longer than a chair of Allah. <laughs> 